Good morning and welcome to week six, day five of our Painkillers video devotional series. I hope that you've enjoyed our week. Happy Friday to you. We're looking forward to Sunday when our pastor is going to bring another amazing word from God on our Painkiller sermon series. So look forward to seeing you all there. But today we're going back to intellectual sabotage. And so we've been talking about Pharisees and peasants this week. And so yesterday we talked about peasants for the first time. And today we're going right back there to kind of finish up this idea of being a peasant. So a Pharisee is someone who gets caught up in their own glory. They, they want to be noticed. They want attention. They have a puffed up view of themselves. On the other extreme from that is this idea of being a peasant. This is someone who is so caught up and they so embrace this idea for themselves that they live their life in the context of being worthless and they refuse to be the person that God has made them to be. So today we're going to do a little self check to see if you have become a peasant, if you've embraced that for yourself. So here are some things that you might hear yourself saying if you've embraced the mentality of being a peasant. You might say, I'm worthless, or I'm no good, uh, I'm a nobody, I can't and I never could. Um, nobody likes me, nobody loves me, uh, nobody would notice if I fell off the face of the earth, um, I, I just can't, I, I'm not worth anything. And so, whether you're a Pharisee or whether you're a peasant, just to set the record straight for both camps, we're going right back to Scripture. And so, we're going to the book of Galatians, New Testament book. Um, we're going to read out of chapter 4, starting in verse 4. If you're driving down the road, let me read to you. If you're sitting at home with your coffee and your Bible, break it out and let's get right to it. Galatians 4, 4. But when the fullness of time came, God sent forth his son, born of a woman under the law, so that he might redeem those that were under the law, that we might receive the spirit of adoption as sons. And because you were sons, God has sent forth the spirit of his son into our heart, crying, Abba, Father. Therefore, you are no longer a slave, but a son. And if a son, then an heir through God. See, friends, we're not equals with God like the Pharisees want to be. Nor are we defeated or abased like the peasants and the beggars. We were runaway and we were rebellious, yes. But one day, the king passed by and he looked on us with love. And he offered to make us his children. He took us in his house and he gave us a good scrubbing. And he made us righteous in his own image. And he dressed us in pure white. And because of that, we are no longer slaves. We are children of God. We have been adopted by love. So don't forget, don't exalt yourself above what he's made you. But also, don't return back to where you were. A princess has no business mucking out a stall, and a prince needs to be learning his father's business. Today, I want you to spend some time thinking about that. Think about what a privilege it is to be a child of the sovereign king, the Lord of the universe. Let's pray. Lord, you said in your word in Galatians that we are no longer a slave, we have become your children, God. You have adopted us into your family, and we are an heir right next to Jesus. And so, God, I just thank you for that. I thank you for your amazing grace, God. Thank you that you love us more than we know. We love you, Jesus. We love you so much. Thank you for loving us so much. Amen. So, I look forward to seeing you at Aiden Westside on Sunday. Blessed daughter of the King, beloved son of the Lord of the Universe, have a great day.